Welcome to another edition of All About the Grace. I'm actually here with Jason Everett, and we're going to be talking about chastity. He is the founder of the chastityproject.com, so you want to check that out. Jason, welcome. Thank you for having me on. What is it, and how is that connected to the gift of human sexuality? Yeah, people get the words confused, celibacy, chastity, abstinence, yeah. which is which. Now, celibacy is the state of not being married. That's what the word celibacy means. Okay. Uh, abstinence means the absence of sex, okay? So it's okay. something you're not doing. Um, chastity is a much fuller notion that involves purity, not just of your body, but of your imagination, your speech, your posture, your mannerisms. It's of the whole human person, and so it's the healthy integration of our sexuality. So it's not something that only single people have to practice until they get married. Mm -hmm. This is something that as a husband I need to practice, having reverence for the gift of, of sexuality. It's something that priests need to practice. So that's basically the purity of the entire human person, my thoughts, my intentions, my actions, my speech, and so on. So. Um what exactly is the mission of the Chastity Project? What are you trying to accomplish? I know you do this with your wife. Mm -hmm. yep. So talk about the mission of it. Yeah, well, we th I often think of the words of Christ where said, blessed are the pure in heart, they will see God. And if you kind of turn this backwards, that if we're not pure in heart, we'll have a very difficult time seeing God. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why the, the fastest rising right now religious group is those who are self-declared nuns, N-O-N-E-S, meaning they don't identify as anything. I think a lot of people are having a very hard time seeing God because our hearts are so polluted by so much junk and porn and broken relationships that it's hard to make sense of, of the relevance of all these theological concepts and, oh, well, whatever. And mm -hmm. I think the real fruit of that is a lack of purity of heart, of seeing God in others in ourselves and in our sexuality. So our job with Chastity Project is to promote this virtue and to tell people that it's never too late. It doesn't matter if you're 47, it doesn't matter if you're 17, you think, oh, well, it's too late for me. Anybody can start over. And this is a virtue we all need to practice. And it's one that ultimately leads, as John Paul II said, he said it's the sure way to happiness. And so it's not about repressing our desires with some neurotic, unhealthy idea. It's about learning how to speak the truth in and through our bodies. So talk about the gift of human sexuality, because I think, you know, sometimes when you hear the word chastity, you might think, you know, this is about not doing X, Y, and Z, but it's really the gift of human sexuality is about what we are doing, the intention of our body, mm -hmm. and, and what we're really supposed to be doing with it, and, and what is it designed for? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and obviously we're designed and made for God, mm -hmm. but if you if you think about the theology of the body, um, how, how are we supposed to be expressing ourselves with our spouse yeah. or prior to marriage mm -hmm. as it relates to chastity, or if you're a priest, and we'll yeah. get into that later. Yeah. John Paul II once said that chastity can only be thought of in association with the virtue of love. And okay. so chastity is a virtue that frees you to love and it frees you to know if you're being loved. And so if, how does it free you to love? Well, if I'm dominated by my hormones and my desires and they're dictating to me how I treat my wife, how I look at other people, I'm not really free to love. I'm not making a gift of myself. I'm using another person as an outlet for what I think of as my sexual needs. I'm mm -hmm. not free to love. And so chastity frees us to love. It frees us to know if we're being loved. I know of one college girl went on a date and she came back crying and her mom said, what happened? And she said, well, I got in the car with a guy and he started to make these little sexual jokes. And I told him, no, I, I practice chastity. And he said, that's okay, there's other stuff we can do. Meaning everything <laughs> but intercourse. And she said, I, I don't think you understand. I respect my future husband, my body and God. And he looked at her and he said, so you mean I'm not gonna get anything tonight? She said, no, you're not. He said, okay, he turned her, the car around, drove her home, dumped her off and he left. And she's never seen him again. And thank God, because she could have given that to him for five years, wondering, does he love me? Is he in this for the right reasons? But on date number one, she let him know, here's my standards. And so chastity brought his intentions to the surface like oil and water. And that's one of its functions, to weed out those who are unworthy of you and are not prepared to love you. So it frees you to love, and it frees you to know if you're being loved. And I think people don't really know what love is. Yeah. You know, we have such a convoluted idea of love, and, and love is really, you know, really you look at the cross, mm -hmm. that's love. I mean, it's, yeah. it's sacrificial love. It's like putting the needs of the other person yeah. ahead of your own. Mm -hmm. So um, let's talk about dating versus courting. Yeah. Um, sometimes people, I guess when I was young, I 
was dating for marriage, though mm -hmm. I know dating can kind of yeah. have the connotation as something different than courting. So could you kind of clear that up? Because young people aren't sure, like, is dating bad or, you know, because I think girls, young ladies are dating for yeah. marriage and men maybe not as much, you know, yeah. just based on, you know, their long-term goals. <laughs> Guys yeah. maybe have short-term girls. I don't know, you know, but I mean, you're a guy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's tough to keep up with because, you know, I knew of one woman, um, elderly grandmother, and she said when she was dating, her mother and grandmother's advice to her was never go on a date with the same guy two weekends in a row because that might make him think you're actually interested and you want to make him wonder. And so every weekend they had a different date with a different guy because the guys were pursuing, they were initiating. Now we are not living in that culture. Right. Girls don't even know what a date is anymore because right. nobody's asking anybody out right. except it's swiping a text. through dating it's a text apps and things or, yeah. like that. And so I think we, we kind of live in a culture of single people who act like they're dating. We have a culture of dating people who behave like they're married and we have a culture of married people who behave like they're single. Like everything <laughs> is it's out of order. Up. And so, you know, maybe 10, 15 years ago, there's quite a big debate over dating versus courtship. So, like, so what, which should, which? what should young people who are single, who have the desire to be married, you know, maybe they've discerned, I know there's a kind of a process of yeah. that too, but let's say that they've yeah. discerned that they want to be married. Yeah. What, how do they go about? Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, what, are the, yeah, what are the things I would say is like, don't, let's not get hung up. I make gestures, up. I don't yeah, even. Yeah, that's fine, I get you. I get where you're going. Uh, you know, let's not get hung up on words, dating versus okay, courtship. Okay. Let's look at okay. the underlying principles okay. that build healthy relationships. Let's look One, at that. Intentionality, you know, direction. Where they, The purpose of dating or courting is to find a spouse. Right. This is not because I'm bored and I'm lonely and everyone else has a boyfriend. It's like, well, no, I need to, dis this is a process of marital discernment. Mm -hmm. And so it has a focused end that if I cannot see myself of marrying this person, I have no business being in a committed relationship with them. So right. it's focused. It is not isolated from the family. It's not her and I against the whole world. Right. It's like, no, we're, we're in this together. You know, if we're going to be married, then I get your family and you get my family. So we need to discern this as a family structure. Uh, and so it's involved in the family. Also purity, like don't behave like you're his wife when you're hardly his girlfriend. You know, we, we need to put things in their proper categories. And that way, if the relationship doesn't work out, it's a much smoother landing. Mm -hmm. As opposed to when you've had the physical intimacy of a husband and a wife, it's like you're flying at 30,000 feet and then he breaks up with you and you're going through this emotional divorce, but you were never married to begin with, but your heart doesn't know that. Right. And so it just simplifies things by having that clear purpose, you know, and clear definitions like, are we dating or are we not dating? And right. I think it's really the boy's job to, to lead in the direction of what are we? So right. she doesn't have to sit around wondering like, are we something? Are we official? Or is he thinking this? Is he thinking that? I think it's a real sign of respect to the woman that the man have clarity in his intentions. And so these are some basic principles, I think, to build a healthy relationship. Well, you know, the other thing that you mentioned that really makes me think about this is that, you know, when people, marriage is kind of a protection for everybody involved mm -hmm. in the sense that you are not meant to have that kind of intimate marital embrace um, you really need to have that within the permanence of marriage yeah. and there's some really good mm -hmm. reasons for that for our own protection you know yeah. and for the protection of the offspring because yeah. if you get together mm -hmm. ahead of that yeah. then you maybe have get have a baby yeah. and then you have abortion and all yeah. sorts of you know oh, bad yeah. stuff and that hurts everybody mm -hmm. you know so it's interesting that you talk about freedom because you know really in the 60s when the you know sexual revolution kind of got started people were really sold a bill of goods that this is like sexual oh, yeah. freedom mm -hmm. so now we're kind of you know bearing the fruit of that and and let's talk about some of the the things that have happened yeah. to people that have kind of bought into that lie. Yeah. I remember meeting one high school girl and she went, she slept with her boyfriend. Her mom found out they got pregnant. The mom forced her to have an abortion. Then they, the guy broke up with her. Then she dated another guy. They slept together. She got pregnant again and she was so afraid the mom was going to force her to get a second abortion. She ran away from home and lived with her boyfriend outside in a cemetery for a couple of weeks. They hardly bathed or ate and got very little sleep emotionally exhausted she finally crawled back home and her mom forced her to have another abortion and then the boyfriend broke up with her
mother again, and now she's cutting herself and going through eating disorders. Like, this is the fruit of the sexual revolution. It isn't just, oh, now I'm free. Free, free to what? Like, free to jump off a cliff? I mean, right. like, and this then you have suicide yeah. and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. So, but, but these desires that we have are from God. Yeah. And there's a way to live those out. So, mm-hmm. how do, what do you tell people that, you know, they're like, well, I'm in the mood, or I want to have, <laughs> you know, I want to have, yeah. I want to have intimacy, or I want to have a boyfriend, or I want to have, you know, yeah. these things. So, the desires aren't wrong or mm-hmm. bad. Yeah. They're God given, but how do we, have self-mastery yeah it's like <laughs> i didn't know i was gonna yeah, get theological yeah, on you but well, you know what i'm saying yeah, it's, it's not wrong to have that drive that passion it's like the engine God. of a car but you could probably use some headlights yeah you know or you're gonna drive into a ditch right and so we, we need both it's not either or like no get rid of all those desires and passions those are bad squelch those out no we we need to harness those but but be able to have some direction and clarity and so that way it's not the intellect or the heart it's both of these things working together but someone's got to be in the driver's seat and if it's your moods, then good luck in that marriage one day. Right. Because what happens when your husband is like, I'm on the mood for whatever, you know, a secretary <laughs> well, I'm or whatever. Sick, like, I'm, yeah. is that, is that or really I'm sick, gonna... I have a headache. Yeah, you know? yeah. Go, go mow the lawn or something. Yeah, yeah. we've got to be able to rise above our moods. So. Well, I want to talk about some of the um, resources you have, because I know you have a lot of stuff on your web page. Mm-hmm. And um, could you talk about just a couple of the resources that people can go to on your web page yeah. and, and get to kind of get some a starting point if they haven't maybe heard of you or yeah. haven't been exposed to your material. Yeah, the easiest way to find us is good. just go to chastity.com. So just type in chastity.com. That'll take you to our website. And we've got, you know, audio, video, YouTube videos. We've got tons of articles, blogs, where if a person's struggling with transgender issues or same-sex attractions, read the blogs. They're done by people who experience these challenges in life and have found joy in embracing the church's teachings on this. So we've got great video resources you can share, blogs. We also have all of our books are 2 or $3 or less so that people can evangelize their confirmation class, their youth group, their hairdresser. Mm -hmm. get boxes of this stuff and just give it out we just want to make it as cheap as we can so the greatest apostles in the church who aren't motivational speakers who are the rank and file laity can do a great job of getting these resources into the hands of those who might need them the most okay now I want to switch to um, if you're a parent Mm -hmm. what are some of the things because you're going to be speaking about and you do speak about parenting for purity what are some of the things that parents can do and I know it starts young but Let's say you're, well, answer that question, then I'll ask, what do you do if your, your kids are older? Then, then what do you do? Yeah, so, I would say, what is parenting for purity, and what, what are things that parents can do to kind of raise children that kind of have the mind, I guess, the mind of God and the mind of yeah. loving people in the right way? I, I mean, there's a plenty of things you could do, but I say the top two mm-hmm. one, be vigilant in terms of internet safety with your kids. Mm-hmm. It's not a question of if your kids are going to see porn. It's when they're going to see porn, and we have to prepare them for that, unfortunately. I mean, my kids, you know, some of the older ones know what pornography is, but they don't even know how babies are made yet. And that's sad, but I've had to explain to them that there's stuff on the Internet, there's stuff that's out there on your grandma's iPad that if you just start scrolling around, you can find. Not that grandma's looking at that stuff, but <laughs> YouTube wants you to see grandma's it. Grandma's Instagram, busted. yeah, you know, all this stuff. That, that The junk is out there. Yeah, and, and it's so on when like... you see it, what do you do? come to mom and dad, you know, we'll help you through this and turn your eyes away. And so we've kind of had to explain to them this stuff prematurely, just for the sake of almost like giving them a vaccine so they don't get the disease. So you're introducing some of this harmful agent, but not enough to actually hurt them in a way that can build up their immunity to resist the real thing. And so be vigilant in terms of giving your kid a cell phone in fifth grade or seventh grade and letting them have it in their bedroom all night long. Like they don't need this stuff. And you need to be able to have internet filters on there to block the junk. So there's a lot that needs to be done in terms of internet safety. But the most important thing is to practice chastity in your own marriage. Now that does not mean abstinence. And talk know. about and talk about what that what that looks like. You know, chastity inside of marriage means just the reverence for the God's gift of human sexuality. It means dad's not looking at porn websites. Mom's not reading Cosmo or Filthy Shades of Grey. Um, they're also open to receiving children as a gift from. God and they're obedient to the church's teaching on sex in marriage which would mean no contraception no sterilization and some couples think well hey well I check us off the list well we made a big (laughs) but you got to realize that okay what am I gonna tell my kid you have to be abstinent for the next 
20 years of your life, but I'm not willing to be absent for a couple days of this month by using right. natural family planning. Right. Like, are we in this together or not? Right. You have to really be living it. Yeah. In order to to expect your kids mm -hmm. to do it. And, it. and and what if you're not? What do you do? I yeah. mean, how do you how do you get there? You know, yeah. because I'm sure there's you know we know what the statistics are. You know, mm -hmm. the NFP couples in the United States are like 5% or something yeah. like that. I think what's happening low. is we want the children to trust our, the mother, but then the mothers don't want to trust their mother, the church. Right. And it's like either trust has got to flow all the way through because if there's a block halfway there, we're, we're resisting grace that God wants to give our families. You know, we've got to be able to trust. And it doesn't mean to have 20 kids or whatever. Right, it's, it's, right. But responsible parenthood isn't always about having fewer kids. Sometimes responsible parenthood is actually having more. Right. And that's something we need to open our hearts to. And you, and you have to discern, you know, you mm -hmm. have to discern like, yeah. is it time? Right. You know, is it exactly. not time? Exactly. Because it isn't always time. Right. You know, and God n understands that. And he, and the church understands that. The church will never tell you how many kids you got to have. Right. But God will. Right. But, do we, but are we willing to, to trust him on this one? So, um, what are some other things that um, what if what do you do if you have teens already because I know it's, it's important to talk about the gift of human sexuality kind of as children are growing up oh, yeah. what if you have teens but you've never uttered a word about you know you, yeah. you need to have a talk yes. right it can't Start be yeah. <laughs> you can't just not talk about it so yeah. how, how would you give what kind of advice would you give to parents about having that talk about the gift of human sexuality. Yeah. It's not just don't do that. Because I know yeah. parents are like, just don't do that, whatever. Yeah. What does yeah, that that's mean? Not gonna cut what it. does that mean? Yeah. You know? Because I mean, if we don't speak, the world will fill the void of our silence with a very different message. Right. And yeah, maybe your parents never talked to you about it, but don't think about it as the talk. Like right. it's some <laughs> bomb you drop on them and it's gonna <laughs> inoculate them from lust forever. <clears throat> this is a conversation. It, it doesn't work. It doesn't this work. is a lifetime conversation. You know, start when they're young and if you haven't start now mm -hmm. you know just like commercial pops up speak in some truth into that you know and you know yeah oh mom whatever here she goes again mm -hmm. do it anyway <laughs> you know drip 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 you know you could get through a rock with one drop of water at a time and so it doesn't need to be overbearing and you know long-winded deep theological every single time but speak up because if you don't, I mean, MTV is not ashamed to talk to your kids about sex. Why are you? Right. Oh. I mean, you can get it pretty much anywhere. Yeah. So I want to talk a little bit now about um, the 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 abuse abuse scandal yeah. with priests mm -hmm. and kind of relate that to chastity yeah. and somewhat infidelity. I mean, oh, yeah. it's kind of all the same thing, you know. Yeah. So. What are your thoughts about what's going on, and how how do we go forward as you yeah. know Catholics? People think, well, Bridget, are you going to leave the church? And it's just like, well, no. It's like, why would I? Yeah. But you know, people kind of think we're crazy. Yeah. You know, why would you stay Catholic? And they don't really get why we are Catholic. Mm -hmm. It's it's a real test of faith. Like, why are you Catholic? Yeah. Are you Catholic because everybody's just so g gosh darn good? Yeah. Uh, you know, because if you really study the history of salvation in the Old Testament. I mean, the Israelites did not have their stuff together. It was a mess. I know a woman who was a Jew, converted to evangelical Christianity, Catholicism, and she said as a Jew, she wonders, like, why did they even, like, this is our family history. Why right. would you even put that book in there? Like, why would you keep <laughs> that? Like, that doesn't need to be remembered. But, but I mean, there's some really bad stuff that's happened, not only in Judaism, but the 2,000 years of Catholicism, the scandals, the brokenness. This is not, you know, a museum for saints, they say. It's, it's a hospital for sinners. And and we're all in need of healing and redemption. And obviously, as a father of seven kids, it's heartbreaking to know that the, and, and seeing some of the details coming out. I mean, I mean, you feel betrayed, you feel angry, you feel disgusted, you go through a whole range, and you should go through all that stuff because yeah. justice needs to happen. Now, thanks be to God, most of these cases are not currently going on. These are right. things from 40, 50 years ago. Right. Not that that makes that any less serious, right. but one of the reasons this did come to the surface is because the church is trying to get this stuff out to the surface. Right. Trying to get the lid off of this. That yeah, there were people trying to you know cover it up for long enough. But the truth, for the sake of the victims, for the sake of people who will not become victims, needs to be spoken. But in the end, we have to remember Judas was at the Last Supper too. Right. But you don't leave Jesus and Peter because Judas was present there, and he's going to be present till the end. Jesus said, "Weeds and wheat are going to grow alongside each other until the very end." And if you try to pull the wheat out, you know, pull the weeds out without the wheat they're both going to get uprooted. And so, you know, we've got to realize, hey, it's going to be a mess. 
and that's okay. Let's pray for our priests. Absolutely. We've got a lot of holy, wonderful, devout, chaste, faithful priests. We do. And we can't just look at all them and think, oh, well, maybe a husband had an affair. Well, all husbands are unfaithful. Right. You know, we have, I mean, you look at the rates of marital infidelity, but that shouldn't you make you give up on the sacrament of marriage. Likewise, you look at some of the numbers of the priestly scandal, and it's heartbreaking, but let's not give up on our wonderful holy priests. Right. And the other thing is, you know, we, we talk about, and this kind of goes back to chastity as a whole. Really, it's about fidelity to Christ. Mm -hmm. And I think there was a, a quote by um, John Paul talking about, it's important for us to just be faithful. Yeah. You know, that we have to be faithful to God's call mm -hmm. and that um, really our chastity of our bodies or chastity in, in whole is really yeah. fidelity to God. Yeah, yeah. And it's really about, um, you know, if we are to be married, mm -hmm we need to be able to have self-mastery. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, yeah. And if you can't have self-mastery, how are you going to yeah. do anything? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you're just going to be all over the place. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and it starts young. Cause, I mean, the church's teachings on sexuality, it's really just simple. It's just that, you know, love, marriage, sex, and babies go together and in that order. Yeah. And when we start breaking the order apart, you have chaos, not only for sexually active junior high kids, but for people in the priesthood, for the married life. Once we start tinkering with God's order and design for human sexuality, brokenness is a natural result of it. But, you know, even as, as heartbreaking as all this news is, there's a purification of the church going on. This is the work of the Holy Spirit yep. drumming up the dredges yep. that need to get out. Absolutely. And, if, and if people are going to leave over this, they're lost. No matter how far and how bad some members fail, God's promise, he's going to still keep the ship afloat. And it's going to go through some tough patches, and it already has in the last 2,000 years. You know, but in the end, I think we're going to come out of maybe a smaller, but a stronger and purer church. So um, for more details about your ministry, could you give that web page one more yep. time? Just go to chastity.com, and you can get in touch. Uh, book speakers at your event, get uh, resources for the teens and the families and your parish. Uh, but most of all, we just ask the viewers to please pray for all the young people that we speak to. Jason Everett, thanks so much for being my guest. I'm glad to be on. Thank God you bless you. Thank you.